us what do you think about the conditions today? Uh, we've got a little bit of wind and a uh, nice warm morning, so I'm sure we're going to have a good time with the bow. We need a little bit of wind so we can move around without making too much noise. And uh, yeah, we'll just take it slow through some river sections and hopefully get you a nice impala. Last day, everybody. I'm in the truck with Hannes right now. We're driving around. We're going to try to spot some, some impalas or maybe even some other animals. We've got nice conditions for the bow today, and that's, that's really my goal is to try to get one other animal with the bow. When I picked up the rifle, made it happen with the Leshway, uh, with the Ram Impala, made two great heart shots. If we can get below, within 50, it's it's done deal, done deal. Got some Impala spotted at the base of this valley, basically right out here. I would rate, maybe let's get a little closer. Yeah. If we need to get the spotting scope out, and then, you know, I would, I would say that it will be a very good stalk, you know, going up that river section. You see we've got some nice cover there. We're going to start with these. If we don't get them, we'll cut around and then come up for those others on the base of that hill. So, Okay, good luck, guys. Safari hunting is kind of like a, a team effort sometimes. There's a lot of communication. We have radios and all the trucks. It's been really helpful just to have communication. So Rob's actually doing the same thing today. We're pretty much done rifle hunting. We've had a fantastic time. Uh, there's nothing like bow hunting, so... We're gonna go try to get that done. Me and Bro have been filming each other's hunts this whole time. I'm just strapping this on and just trying to be as quiet as I can. We've got a big Impala Ram spotted. There's not too many of them. There's a group of about four or five, so that's, that's good. I think we're gonna go way around and try to try to come up over it. Get a little higher. Okay, it's time to go. We just spotted some impala over the hill for about 200 yards away. We're gonna continue to follow this creek. Dead kudu. You think the cold the cold just got him? Look how thick that is, y'all. Ryan is so lucky he got one of these kudus. They call these the gray ghosts. And they're trying to breed up the populations down here, but it's the ones that they bring down, they're used to warmer conditions. I have no idea how those impalas busted us. Maybe they didn't bust us. I don't think it was us. The first stock was unsuccessful. I don't know how they got away. It was not us. We were very, very good on our approach. Wind was good. It was right in our face the whole time. Went down into creek bed, came back up, and they were just they were just gone when we got up to the top. We were super sneaky, but you know, they're herd animals. So they watch each other, they watch other animals that could have seen something. It wasn't even us. I got so fortunate with the bull Nyala that I shot because it was by itself. It was kind of middle of the day. It was bedded down, you know, super comfortable. Wind was right. It was, everything was perfect. I had no other animals to look at and to, to spook it. So that's the big challenge on stock number two. The Grey Ghost. Just spotted some more Impala. They're kind of mixed in with some Eland, which are those giant antelopes. We saw them together on the hill lastly as well, so I don't know if this is the same group, but we want to try to find a small group. You know, three or four, ideally just one buck, 
like one ram by himself, but that's not gonna happen. Hannes is gonna take a look at the spotting scope and just see if there's any shooters in there. Saw a few uh, bucks there. I think it's a little bit open. They're standing in the open, so we might might just leave them there and then first go to the mountain. We know of a bachelor there and try to um, maybe follow that bachelor. Yeah. Well, these guys, the Springbok, the Zealand, you know, it's Quite open. lots of hours. Yeah, yeah, lots of hours. So, but we'll come back to them if we if we can't find the one in the mountain. So let's go check it out. <laughs> That was a fun stock right there. Let me play this back for you guys. We snuck down there. They kept going back and forth within the bushes. So we had cover. We got close within uh, 40, 41 yards the first time. The two bulls or the two rams started fighting with each other. So the older ram, he was pushing, pushing him off. So then they came back around, got within 30 yards. We were really close and there was a few gusts that I think they caught caught us, got the wind correct, and then there was red hartebeest sitting in front of us. And the red hartebeest, from every animal I've seen out here, they are the most uh, sneaky, they are the most attentive. They're always looking. Uh, every time we've even driven close to them, they take off, and they were sitting in between us and the Impala. So I almost got a shot at a red hartebeest with a bow, which would have been I would have never thought that would have ever happened. So now we're gonna try to find a, a group, a smaller bachelor group maybe that doesn't have as many female Impalas around that it's it's just so hard when there's so many eyeballs. That was fun right there, Honus. <laughs> I enjoyed doing that. I like the stalking, sneaking up. There's yeah. nothing like that. Yeah, and as soon as you get close, you know, it's just, it's, it's just so cool. Yeah, right? your heartbeat goes up. Like, it's yeah. the best adrenaline rush ever. Yeah. Every time we'll get so close and then They'll be just uh, just a hair away. The spring buck. Yeah, they'll be spring bucks right here. Wow, wow. Oh, look at them pranking. So close right there. Giant ram, and there was two other good ones in there. We just 
we were at 50 yards and they just turned their heads just for a second as we were encroaching into the bush to make the shot. We're going to keep driving instead of pushing them. We're going to try to get beyond them and then see what they do. As we were going on that last stock, Ryan and Patrick found a huge ram and got it with the rifle, so we're gonna come help them right now. This is a, this is a giant. Big ram down. Oh, man. Mondo. Beautiful little animals. Nice job. We just spotted a nice impala back all on his own. We've been waiting for it the whole day, so we're gonna stop the truck and then start uh, stalking back. So, the wind's perfect, and hopefully, we'll get him. So, we'll try our best. <laughs> I cannot believe we had him probably 30, 40 yards away, just waiting for him to step out in front of a bush. And he just never stepped out. He just changed directions. And then we had to chase him back around, came out, popped out a few different times at, you know, 50 yards or so, but just there was brush in the way, ended up being more impalas back there. And so, uh, they got around us, then they winded us, and they started you know, blowing and everything. My legs are on fire right now. It's a, it's a workout, creeping around. You have to be as quiet as a mouse. You have to know the wind. You have to know the animal, and you have to know yourself. You have to know your limitations, and you know that's where you build up confidence. And the amazing thing about it is, even if you don't get an animal, you still get the rush. Like, my heart is just pounding. Nobody moved, but there's an Impala right there. It's just in the woods. Gosh, there's a giant. Impala's just dropped me off about 600 yards away from the Impala. They're working their way into the wind. is bad but once I get to this tree line it's gonna be good and there's a big blue wildebeest that's out there in the open so let's go see if this works this might be one of the last stocks of the day Just put my bow away. The last stalk was amazing. Came 80 yards from a wildebeest. I just peeked around and saw me. They have really good eyesight and that it had busted me. I made a stalk on some impalas. A jackal comes out, starts feeding or looking and uh, stepped out at 44 yards. I didn't even have my GoPro on. I just knocked an arrow, flew and I did nick the animal and i want to show you guys the arrow there's some of the hair it's on that broad head and then just a little bit little, tiny bit of blood just nicked him but i can honestly say this 
was my best day of bow hunting ever. I saw hundreds of animals. I had multiple opportunities. I've never knocked an arrow that many times and been that close to animals for that amount of time. We probably had 30 minutes today where we were within range of animals. And when you're bow hunting, that is a ton of time because we're not sitting in a tree, we're spot and stalking, we're going through the trees. Uh, it was just incredible just to be able to watch all the animals up close for that long. So my most incredible day of bow hunting ever. Thank you. <laughs> Big pleasure. I promise you this, I will be back with a bow and plenty of arrows. This is the most incredible bow hunting experience I've ever seen. Like if you guys love bow hunting, you have to, have to, have to come down here and try this just because you're gonna be busy all day. You're gonna have so many stocks. It's gonna be awesome. If you like sitting on water holes, you can go do that. But I promise if, if you're like me and you love just the experience of trying to get close to animals, sneaking up on them, it's the ultimate for me anyway. So if you love that, you're going to have fun all day here. It's that time, y'all. One last sip of coffee here in South Africa. This, these are the sad times. Packing everything up right now. Getting ready to head to the airport. And then that's the only thing that sucks about this place, y'all, is just the travel. It's a long ways. But once you get here, it is just... <sighs> well, let me put it this way. I will be coming back here. I don't know how many times, but I've heard, you know, everyone that comes and hunts in Africa usually gets bitten by some sort of bug if you have a good experience and you just keep coming back. Not literally being bit by a bug, but the African hunting bug, it's just so much more fast paced and exciting than hunting back in the States. And there's just so many more species. I think the good Lord just had an amazing time creating this continent and all of its species when you just look at the creation. And even though I didn't get an animal on the last day of the hunt, but <laughs> did not phase me one bit. If you bow hunt and you know the challenges and the ups and downs, it's all about the experience and my adrenaline was flowing. I'm gonna head back to the great United States now, y'all. But I'm definitely gonna keep South Africa in the back of my mind. I cannot wait to see OSG and my beautiful baby girl. And please hit the like button on this video, guys. Share it if you think any of these series, uh, any videos in these series are shareable. And thank you for just tuning in and subscribing. I will see you back in the States on the next one.